Welcome back to Is It Wrong to Trip Goose in a Dungeon? Yep, this is episode number 19. Yes, 19. Now, this one I am reviewing the 35th of the anime, which is called Invisible Breakthrough. Yep. And don't worry, there's going to be a bunch more videos coming today. Now, I do have to make a slight correction from last week. I thought the last week's episode just had the first two chapters and the prelude. Oh no! <laughs> they didn't just adapt those two chapters. They also adapted the first half of chapter three. Yes, I'd say about half the chapter, though they did take a couple aspects of that, that first half and put it in this episode. This one, I'd say, did a little better job with adaptation-wise with this episode than it comes to last week. From what I can tell, for stuff was cut, I'd say it was minor stuff. Cuts weren't as bad as they were in last week's episode. Now the episode, now th because I was rereading the, the two chapters, chapters 3 and 4, I should point out though, 3 is pretty lengthy. Yes, 3 is kind of like it was with last book, basically where like 3 is like the longest chapter of the book. I mean, 3 starts at page 79 of book 11 and ends at chap page 215, 15, 115. It is roughly, it's not 100 chat pages, this one. No, it's not that length. It is roughly, I think it's like, let's see, 30, I think it's like 35 pages. Yeah, 35 pages. Mm -hmm. That could probably explain why the adaptation process was a little bit better in this episode than it was in last week, because they adapted like half this stuff last week and the rest of this week, and plus the entire, what I could tell, pretty much the entirety of chapter 4 Though they cut some minor bits here and there. Like, for example, Loki is all over Chapter 4, and yet in the episode, she's nowhere to be seen. Excuse me, what happens most in the episode? Well, mostly you just have Belle being distraction for Loki Familia. The whole episode. There's a few different bits basically going on here. We also see Hestia with the Deadless notebook, the one she was getting back in last week's episode. Here in Hiniko, looking at the using this map, thanks to Fellows' magic, and basically the red is... Now, there's two different sets of feathers. The white feathers on this map are basically the Hestia Familia, the ones that are out there. The red is the Xenos. Bell, of course, is being distraction. And, of course, ties what Ainz is up to during this episode. She doesn't do very much this episode because... She basically convinces Finn that she should keep an eye on Bell, even though she's the one who's supporting him. He's like... Okay, after some convention, he, he he does allow her to go. And she follows him. The whole episode right after that. And then we see her basically seeing him have a conversation first with Nestia, which I kind of... Now, the thing is, there's actually a bit more of the conversation. There's a bit more appearance with her uh, from... She was not in last week's episode, but she's in the first half of the of chapter three they skipped over from last week. Like, she's from the Mitch Familia. The same one where... Medico is from. Yes. Same Familia. And that's how he knows her. So they talk briefly for a bit. And their bit is to set up basically a distraction for him later. And then we see him interacting with Ren. With Ryu and Estia. Which of course they basically playfully play with him. And of course they go off. Basically Ryu is basically going to find a distraction later. Now meanwhile though. Let's follow this going. We have Elena. Yeah, first see her in the episode. Now, the way they edit, basically have her here is like her, basically her running with, with uh, Hermes, which she runs with him, Susie. She gets a temper tantrum that basically builds into a color everything because they, they, they adapt the rest of the epilogue. They have like maybe like two pages of the epilogue uh, two episodes back. So. She just storms out after basically says she wants to talk to Belle, and then she talks to Hermes. For a very, it's then she meets up with Hermes. Now this actually comes a couple pages after she leaves, like actually like sometime after she leaves in the actual book itself. And I appreciate the anime actually has her meeting with Hermes and Astronema right after she leaves the guild hall. So, and they go have a drink. Is it beer? Nope, it's lemonade. Yep, they're drinking lemonade. Which I think this conversation is from the book. I don't remember. I was looking. But it was basically, I think this probably scene they added in, but it's okay scene. 
And, well, she's basically really want to see Bell. And Hermione's like, okay, you can go see Bell. Take this with, of course, she's playing the flashback. Take this with you. Take this eye with you. Meets with Bell. She gets a chance to give it to him, but she doesn't get a chance to see Bell. Now, in the actual book itself, there's actually a lot more going on with Bell and Elena in the chapter. They actually cut out because it's very brief because she basically is holding onto Bell's arm the whole period of time. Of course, his arm is basically in her chest. Like, bumping up against her chest half the time. Now, there's actually a lot more stuff going on in this scene in the book, which they cut off from the anime for some reason. Don't really know why. And, of course, then it provides distraction long enough for him to get away. And then, of course, well, and we have this three adventurers who were following him. That This actually is from the book. They see Bell. They want to attack him because what happened, uh, a couple of him protecting the monster Winnie. So, then, of course, we have Nestia, prize distraction with illusion magic, basically via flower. And then, of course, he gets away. The Irons kind of sees him get away. Then he's, she's blocked by Ryu. They, it's a slight wording change, basically, where in the anime it says she's in place. In the book, she says basically she, she basically just lost him, which I, I'm not really going to complain about that change. But mostly, but it's the same bit. We also see what, well... Lily's up to in the episode. She's seen us several times in the episode. First time you see her, she's just hiding in an alley, and then she disguises herself as one of the monsters, the basically the the rabbit, who looks like uh, something like Alice Wonderland. She runs around this thing for a bit, and she says, "Struck at midnight." Turns back normal, and they ask like, "Where's the monster?" Like, "With that way." And then she's later seen transforming into Finn, redirecting Rao. She's one of the adventurers from the Lokia Guild. And redirecting him to Center Town because that's where all the monsters showed up. And yeah, that's simply it for her involvement in the episode. As for Wolf and Mystico, now Bell got to a certain point. Now they would actually get to a certain point and be clearing. So we have Hestia using Felos's uh, magic to contact him. Yeah, and he, of course they move. The monsters move out, though they get to a certain area where they're blocked by the dwarf from the Lokio Guild. Loki Familia. And of course, Wolf has to fight him, though Mitiko had to stay behind too. Though, even all the heroes get away, except for Winnie, who gets separated. Yeah, she gets separated. And of course, Hesse does tell Belle exactly what happened, so he basically goes after her. And then we see apparently Rao going to the center town where, where Finn is, and he's like, What are you doing here? He's like, Uh, you told us to come here. He's like, no, I didn't. He's like, yeah, you did. They're like, okay, yeah, basically, Lily pulled the same trick she did in the last season with the with the Apollo kill. Yep. And then, of course, we have Winnie. She meets up with, I don't remember the, I think it's Tanya, the, the one who's got, it, this is the one who's got thing for Finn. She meets up with Winnie. It looks like they're about to fight because she sticks out her twin blade. I'm trying to think what else. Um... Yeah, mostly, but that's it. It's a pretty interesting episode, and I gotta admit, the pacing of this episode was a lot better than last week's episode. With that, like, it seems like the last week's episode, they have a lot of the book, and I do mean a lot. I would say it's a lot more than 80 pages they, they apparently got from last week. They have over 100 pages from this book. This this chap, this week's, no, not really. The, the adaptation is not that bad. Yeah, but who knows what they're going to do for next week because, I mean, they just pretty much kind of in the way finished Chapter 4, from what I can tell. And they are probably going to start next week. They're going to do 5 because next one's called Ultra Soul next week. So it's probably going to be, well, probably going to be because it looks like it's be the actual fight we're building toward the whole entire, this whole entire arc, the fight between Bell and Ainz. And, and which that's going to be very interesting. Hopefully that the enemy does it justice. I would not be surprised though if they save that fight for the final episode of the season. I wouldn't be surprised though. But yeah, in case you're curious though, because they finish up chapter four, there's like roughly three chapters left to adapt, plus an interlude and a epilogue. So 
Who knows what they're going to have for next week? My guess is they might. They might. I don't, I don't, I don't know if they'll do the interlude or not. That's, that's the thing. I don't know if they will do it. They would. I'm not really sure. It just depends upon what JC staff wants to do. But a good, but a pretty good episode nonetheless. Despite the fact it doesn't really progress the f- plot forward very much. But I don't blame JC staff for that. I blame. You can kind of blame the source material for that because it seems as though it just loves set up. Yes, lots of setup for future stuff happening. Yep. So yeah, that's it for Circle View. My next review is going to be a review of the new chapter for My Hero Academia. Yep. I'm also going to do reviews for not only that, but also Blue Exorcist, Case Closed, One Piece, and Barto. And I'm hoping to get time to do one review for Trinity 7 today. So basically, overall, after I do... My My Hero Academia, I'm hoping to do about five more videos today, but who knows if I'm able to do them or not, okay? But do this next video. Bye.